What is going on, everyone? Today, I wanted us to have a chat. Yes, us. You and I. I'm not sure if this style of video where I narrate over gameplay is cool with you all. So if they are, make sure to subscribe and like the video so I can keep improving my videos. All right, back to the DPS meters. Also controversial warning, uh, uh, uh. Continue this video with caution. Let's start with the negatives of DPS meters. Many people's arguments is that DPS meters breed toxicity. Even Smilegate's ex-director Gold River was extremely against the DPS meter. So much so that anyone who used it in Korea was banned instantly. Meanwhile, outside of Korea, DPS meters are being used everywhere, and it seems like AGS is okay with it. There are no bans resulting from the meter. People claiming that they got banned because of meter are more likely just participating in RMT and want to look less like a loser. I don't know what's worse, getting banned or publicly outing yourself as getting banned because of RMT but trying to save face and saying it's because of meter. You might as well just stamp a big L on your forehead. So, with the rampant existence of DPS meters globally, how is the toxicity? Well, honestly, in my experience, I have not seen many toxic cases because of DPS meter. For the most part, people are hiding the fact that they are using the meter just in case you could get banned for admitting in the in-game chat that you are. Now, have I seen some people being singled out and told to pump more or lobbies with a specific DPS number requirement to join? Yes, there will always be those types of people, but for the most part, it has been an okay experience. Like just in personal experience, I have never had the lobby leader instantly quit the raid to kick out a DPS. Now, does that mean it never happened? No, I'm sure it has happened, but just not in my experience. But do let me know if you've ever experienced this, whether you are the one that got kicked or someone from your lobby got kicked. It's going to be interesting to see the amount of toxicity. Okay, so we talked about some of the negative of DPS meters. Let's talk about the positives now. DPS meters provide a variety of information that you can see in real time and also after the raid. The most obvious is damage, but you can also see things like synergy uptime, crit rate, the boss's HP, the port uptime, skill cast uptime, damage distribution, the list goes on. These are incredibly valuable for you as a player to learn why maybe your damage is not as high as you because you may be thinking that you are playing well but in actuality there is definitely something missing the dps meter helps to identify that missing piece for example i had a soul fist in my boldest hard mode run and i believe he was 1630 and this man did not have his synergy skill. The bolt crash or whatever you call it, didn't have it. But I can instantly tell because of the meter. My friend's meter, of course, not mine. <clears throat> Off cop. But that's just an example of, you know, something is missing. He wasn't doing, you know, optimal damage. And that was why. Another thing I mentioned is crit rate. If you know how often you are critting on your skills, you can start changing playing around with your relic sets and maybe valuing crit synergies higher or lower depending on your crit rate. I think this is the fun part of being able to just test different builds to find the build most right for you in your situation. Boss's HP is also a really good thing to see because it's pretty difficult to read it in game. And, and look at the extreme vault in where it's question mark, but I can see how much HP this vault in has. It also tells you the HP of shields like in Thaymine Gate 3 during Horse Clash. 
it helps you to figure out whether you need to turn on your burst to finish off the shield or you can save burst for after. Overkilling the shield is just going to make you lose damage. And we don't want that. The port uptime is a huge one too for the supports. And don't worry, I haven't forgotten about the supports guide video. That is coming really soon. Supports have no concrete way of visualizing whether they are doing a great job or not. Even on the MVP screen, the support who has the strongest DPSs in their party will win no matter what. Therefore, even if you play perfectly, you may never get Radiant Supporter. With the meter, you will at least know that you did a great job, and it was just your DPS's party that didn't do as well. This is really important for supports to know, and I can't believe we don't have any support changes to alleviate this. But spoilers, we will talk more about that in the support video. So now we talked about the negatives and the positives of the DPS meter, both of valid merit. Perhaps a compromise of showing the meter for only your own character might work, but most likely because Gold River absolutely hated meter, we will likely not see the DPS meter ever being implemented in Lost Ark. Whatever you choose to partake in the DPS meter or not, just remember that we are all humans in this game and we all deserve to be treated as such. Thank you all for watching, and I know not many people watched till this part, so I'll do a test. So obviously, subscribe. Like right now. Click on the button. Okay, we good? Cool. Now for the test, just make a regular comment, but just add pineapple in your comment. That will be our code word. Okay, so this took way too long, so we'll end this video here. Uh, let me skip all the way to the end so you guys can see the final clear. This is the final clear. We had two people dead. This is my 1620 Nights Edge video. This is my most viewed video on my channel as of right now. Uh, hopefully, I get more views later on, but there you go. This was Extreme Vault Val Valton. Sorry, Extreme Valton on the Knight's Edge Soul Eater. But we will end the video here. I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.